and putting on a show and you know and, and having a good time while he's doing it. You, know, you can't ask for a better job than that. future for this Southern Californian punk pop phenomena? Future of the band, I would say, um, man, it's, it's, I think they're doing everything they can right now to try to diversify, um, playing in other bands and doing other things. I think their biggest success would be um, if they decide to continue on as a band, their music needs to continue to evolve. I think each one of their records had some cool tunes that were really catchy that it just kept bumping them up to the next level. So I, I mean each record, I mean when they did Enema I said to Marcus, so you think this is it, you'll do this out and then the band takes a shit and he says, that's what I thought about Dude Ranch. He goes, I was happy with that. I, was, I don't know. You know and I've seen him get asked, you know, well, you gonna keep making records? He says, sure, if they want to buy them, I'll make them. You know? And I, and I also think that uh, when the time comes, if it comes, who knows, that they'd be graceful about it and they would, you know, they'd bow out nicely. They wouldn't be bitter. You know, and I think if somebody comes up behind them, I think they'd, you know, pass the torch off with grace. I don't think they'd have any problems with it. But they keep doing well. There, there almost seems to be some, a lot of side projects brewing within the Blink-182. Travis, the, new, the newer drummer, aside from Scott, like back in the day, he's playing with Tom's side project, uh, what's Boxcar Racer now? And he, he's also playing in a side project called uh, the, Transplants. the Transplants with Rancid, uh, with Tim Armstrong and Matt Freeman of Rancid. Uh, I know they're actually gonna rent a house. They're gonna record a new record. So I think they're very busy but I don't think there's any slowing down from Blink-182. I actually met with their managers last week and I know that they're quite gung-ho for the new year and are really excited about their new record and want everybody to hear it and, and they're, they want to work, you know? They want, I think they're going to go out and play and you know, be just as big as they've always been. Every time they put out a record, it surprises me. Because you, you always think that, you know, how, like with any band, you just presume there's a life and, you know, how many Rolling Stones are there going to be, you know, that go on for decade after decade. And you, every time a new band comes, it's, oh, sure, they're great, but they won't last. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to predict the future. They've surprised me time and time again, and, and I guess they'll continue to surprise me. It'll be interesting to see if, if they'll be able to pull this off in the future. As you've seen the side projects come about, I think that they're getting very restless. Um, there's been rumors of that, that, that Mark and Tom aren't getting along as well anymore. They, they also both have children, you know, they're, they're new parents. And I would see them going, though I think that they'll always be together, but I don't think, that, I think they've lost the zeitgeist of the youth that they had because of the side projects are being diverted, because you just can't hold on that long. Pearl Jam didn't do it. Green Day, they did it, but not as, they're not as big as they once were. You know, they, it, you can't hold a, an audience for, the, you, you, punk, especially punk, it's supposed to, meant to be one album, you die, and you're out, and then that's it. They've held on to it for much longer than anybody thought they would. And I think they'll always write good songs, and I think that they'll always have a fan base that'll buy the records, but I don't think that they'll keep the, the, the attention of the nation for too much longer, because it's not meant to be that way. The pop art culture is way too fickle for that. I mean, I won't give up what I do for the world. I mean, this is a dream. There's a lot of things that suck about it. I mean, anything has its, its bad points. I mean, even, you know, I don't, well, I guess just being born into a million dollar inheritance isn't that bad. There's nothing bad about that. That would be bad. If uh, That wouldn't be a bad thing to happen. If you were born into a million dollar inheritance, that would be a good thing. You know what? I don't, I don't think they knew. 
I bet that Tom and Mark put that band together to get chicks. They've never told me this, but I bet they loved playing guitar and loved singing and, you know, loved laughing and said, hey, let's write some silly songs, you know? And I think then, you know, they started playing and it got on the radio. I doubt they ever thought that they would be as big as they are now. I can't tell you for sure, but I doubt it. Are they, are they surprised by their, uh, their own success? I'd say without a doubt they are. I think they, they, they thought, I mean, as they told me one time, they said that the, the, all they wanted to do was play the big room at Soma. They just wanted to play the main stage. That's all they wanted to do. And if they could ever headline that, they would be in heaven. Their whole attitude, I think, sometimes is just like, when's this going to end, you know? At least it seems that way with me. I mean, unless they're, unless they're just, you know, pulling my leg. But, you know, every time I've talked to them, interviewed them on the radio, it's kind of like they still can't believe it's happening. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I think they're, they're so grateful for it because it's not like they, it's not like they let it, you know, get to them. At least so far they haven't. Well, we'll see. The wave of excitement surrounding Blink-182 shows no signs of slowing down. The band are already being called the punk phenomenon of the new millennium, having firmly fixed themselves into the punk rock hall of fame with every other teenager hailing Blink-182 as their heroes. Long may they continue. That's what they did, hung out at the mall, messed around with girls, you know, told jokes, and now they've made a living out of it. Disgusting, my friend.